good evening, guys. Uh, we're going to get into our final segment here um, on doing some our flexibility work. Uh, Training-wise, we're showing you that our flexibility component because it's very, very important in what we're doing. And so we're. Sh um, I just got done doing some foam rolling, and uh, I'm going to show you some, a few other things that we do as well. We're also going to talk about core this evening as well. Uh, but let's talk about our uh, flexibility. And what we do is we do a combination of foam rolling and trigger point release. And uh, you know some of the things that, the, that this does, uh, foam rolling, is it helps to improve muscular imbalances. There's five major points. I'm not going to get into the science of it, but the five major points are it helps to improve muscular imbalances. Um, it helps to increase or help um, better your joint range of motion. Um, it definitely helps to decrease muscle soreness. And it also helps to increase the extensibility of that muscle tendon junction uh, which is very very important and it helps to um, kind of maintain muscle length. Uh, we do this every other evening and it's more you know in the beginning when we had extreme muscular imbalances we would do it every day and it drastically improved muscular imbalances. It also helped all those five components that we mentioned. And we do it now preventative-wise because if we don't, all those things that we mentioned, um, joints will get tighter, that muscle tendon junction will decrease in performance, and we do it now just to make sure that all the length of all the muscles stay um, at their proper length. This is self-myofascial release. You can get a lot of information about this on our website, but essentially what we're doing is we're looking for tender areas in our body, and we're holding those tender areas, like here's one in my hip right here, and I will hold that for about 30 seconds, really press into it, and you'll actually feel the muscle relax and, and release. And those five things, those five components, or the five different uh, benefits that we showed you, that is done on a daily or every other day basis by us. Uh, so this is one technique we use, self-myofascial release. Uh, it is great. Uh, we'll show you a couple other techniques just here in a second. Well, you saw that we were doing some um, self myofascial release with a foam roller. The foam roller, by the way, what do you think of our Vikings room? We're doing this in our awesome Vikings room. Jen, get the fat head for a second. Oh, okay. Sure. This is our Vikings room, if they are Vikings any longer. Anyway, uh, so you saw us do uh, self myofascial release with a foam roller. That's great for big areas like where I do that for my core. That's individualized, so you do that on areas that are tender for you. I personally do it on my calves, I do it on my quads, my lats, my low back. Uh, Jen, where, what areas do you do it at? Mainly my calves. Mainly calves. And uh, so that gets into a lot of the um, you know bigger areas. This is the body back buddy. This is, as you know, all the different knobs. This gets into all the uh, smaller areas that a self myofascial release or a foam roller will not get into and uh, this really gets into the nooks and crannies. We use a combination of the two. I, uh, Jen, I don't know if she can see that, but I get it into my feet, um, into my quads, take some of the knobs and get it into my calves, and probably for most people, you sit here, do it on the side that you can see, and get it into my neck. And it's basically the same as self myofascial release where you get into the trigger areas hold it for 30 seconds. In fact, if I get it right here in my neck, I'll apply a good amount of pressure and then actually start moving to try to increase the range of motion as I'm applying pressure. So we do a combination of foam rolling and trigger point release with the Body Back Buddy. And as we mentioned, we do this preventative-wise for maintenance. Uh, but when muscular imbalances are present, this will greatly improve those five components or points that we mentioned. Even Jen uses it. <laughs> what do you think, Jen? It's good. It hurts, but it's good. <laughs> and, now, Jen's had a lot of uh, like back, knee pain. Have you have you noticed a significant improvement doing self myofascial release and trigger point release? Oh, Sure. What happens when you don't do it? Um, stiffness, pain. <laughs> and the joints? Yeah, kind of all over. <laughs> and what happens? And what happens? Is it more important to do it for a long time or consistently? Consistently. 
And what do you notice when you do it consistently? Um, less pain. Yeah. Do you, when your <laughs> workouts in the gym, do you feel like you're able to have greater range of motion yeah. and less, and you're able to push harder because you have less pain in the joints? Yes. Cool. Well, Jen does it too. I do it too. We recommend all our clients do it. Not only if the larger majority listen to us. <laughs> Sorry. Here is Jennifer up in our bedroom doing her abdominal crunches, uh, one of the abdominal exercises that we do in our core training. And here I am up in our bedroom doing knee raises, one of the other exercises we do for our uh, core movement muscles. We do a combination of knee ups and crunches on the ball. Well, there you have it. There is our core um, strengthening things that Jennifer and I do, uh, which is different than core stabilization. Core strengthening is has to do with flexion and extension of the core, where core stabilization is more done in a static um, means. So um, that's it for our training. It, it covers just the basics of it, but I hope it gives you a uh, just kind of a flavor for what we do. Next week we're going to get into a very simple but powerful topic when we talk about our cardio through the DotFit system. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah.